All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, today what we're going to actually be doing is we're going to be modeling this lamp, which is a relatively simple lamp. However, um, it does have some uh, kind of unique details that I think could be translated into different objects. So let's go ahead and get started. We will start off in Rhino. And sometimes, yeah, we model right in the file that we are using, but other times we'll just model in a brand new file. So this is going to be our new file that we're going to use for the lamp. So typically we start off with the top view and we kind of get the overall height of things. So I'm going to start off with a circle and I'm going to start at zero. Okay, and I'm going to do a diameter of 17. And I'm going to do, um, and that's going to be for the top of it. And then the base, I'm going to hover over here. Oh, I got my center turned off. Turn off my near because it's annoying. And I'm going to hover over here and click. And then I'm going to do a base of um, 11 inches. And that's going to be the size of the base of the lamp, top of the lamp. Great. Then we've got, it's, it's hooked up on basically rods, and those rods are um, one inch. So I'm going to draw another circle. And I'm going to do one for one inch. And then there's another part of it that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do 1.5 inches for that part. And I think that is kind of the top down view of our lamp. Okay, so let's switch over to a perspective view. Now the lamp at the very top is 61 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up 61. Okay. And then I'm going to extrude the curve down nine inches. Switch to shaded view to get a better vantage. And then I'm actually going to, um, I'm gonna actually make this have thickness. Yes, you could just use one surface, but then you might have a problem with having a double-sided texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and shell it. Remove the top and then remove the bottom. Then hit enter. Oops, sorry. Remove the top, remove the bottom, and change the thickness to one eighth of an inch. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead down here and I'm going to extrude this base up an inch and a half, but I'm going to move these up first an inch and a half just so that they're already at the right height here. So you're always trying to think a couple of steps ahead. Um, I want those to stay on top of my lamp base. So extrude this up 1.5 and see those circles are still on top instead of being buried below. And then this piece is going to go all the way up to the very top. So we'll extrude that. Fifty nine and a half inches. A little simple math there. OK, and then the thick part of this is actually going to start about seven inches up. And then I'm going to extrude that 36 inches. Okay. Not too difficult to make this thing happen. Great. I also have another part at the top here that is going to be um, sticking up like about an inch and a half from the top. So it's going to be made out of that same kind of circle though. So I'm just going to grab that circle and I'm going to move it, but I'm going to grab it from the center and move it to the center on this. Does not want to grab the center for some reason. Um, 
because it's probably because it's an extrusion. So if I explode it and then join it, it's a poly surface. Let's see if that now allows me to move from the center to the center. Yeah. Sometimes the behavior of objects is dependent on the uh, type of object. See, now it says closed solid poly surface. Before it was called an extrusion, which I believe this is still called an extrusion. Closed extrusion, it has less parameters to deal with. So poly surfaces are um, a little bit more based on separated geometry, which is nice. So let's go ahead and extrude this up 1.5 inches. Okay. Now you could be done here, or we can go ahead and actually uh, create, there's little cross braces on the inside here that, that is uh, kind of where the, uh, the light bulb hangs out. So the way we do that is we draw a simple line, and I'm gonna just do from one end of the quadrant. And if I did my math right, it should be kind of pretty well laid out here. And then I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. To perpendicular. And I'll pipe this. And I'm gonna do a 1 8 inch piping. Okay. And it does go a little too far there. I can always just go Boolean difference keep this get rid of this delete input no and then oops i did it the wrong way oops edit redo okay boolean difference keep this get rid of this okay that just gets rid of my little extra piece there great and then i can get rid of this line too and then I'm going to make four of these. So array, polar, and grab the center point. That's an extrusion, unfortunately, but I can use the center here too. And the number of them is four. Enter, enter, enter. Okay, so that gives us the kind of the top of the lamp, even if we don't really see it, not a big deal. Um, then the last thing I want to do is actually I'm going to just draw a sphere and I'm going to do a diameter of seven inches. And I'm going to pull it in from the side too. Whoops. Negative two. Mm. Yeah, I'll just kind of squish it myself. This is more of an art than a science right here. I'm just kind of making this shape, which is going to be where our bulb is. And that center point and move it down. And the reason for that is, is I might want to use this later on to diffuse the light so I can kind of control how the lamp looks. Okay. So then I'm just going to make sure that there is no weird overlapping geometry. Um, all Boolean difference. Keep this, get rid of this. So that goes all the way through. Boolean difference, keep this, get rid of, or wait, keep this, get rid of this. And that's basically it. We've got that lamp pretty well dialed in relatively quickly. Of course, the next steps are to um, change the materials so or change the layer names. So I'll switch over here to layers and we'll layer it up based off of the color. So we got brass, we got um, like a fabric and we've got like a black plastic. So I'll call this.
Actually, just Boolean union these together, make things easier for later. And then I'm going to select this as the default. So if I, I may change all the brass to the brass layer. And Boolean union this together too. Hmm. I guess I'll Boolean these ones individually. Just try not to make, try to make sure that they don't disappear on me. Hmm, it's weird. Sometimes Boolean union is finicky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate these real quickly. And I think in this case, the Boolean union is not working because these um, bases here don't quite overlap enough. So I'm just going to kind of pull them in. Control shift click to grab or command shift click if you've got a Mac to grab any face. And then let me just Z enter S enter. So I'm selected and I'm now controlling where I'm orbiting. Control shift or command shift, grab it and then bring everything back. And that's another reason why it's nice to work on these in kind of their own individual files is because here, you know, when I want to bring everything back, I'm not bringing back an entire house worth of stuff. So it works better. Yeah, so that worked. Yeah, so what probably it was happening is, is there, there was just like a weird overlap happening between these objects. And it's not happening anymore, so that looks good. And let's look at the photo reference again, just make sure I'm brassing everything in the right spots. Yeah, looks good, looks good. All right, and then call this one shade. And we'll do this one here. Oops, forgot I need to change the layer. And you know what? I'm looking at this now and I'm like, oh, I should have cut this out. So let me cap that. Hmm. Yeah, this one is not going to be what I want. Just explode it. And then I can delete this center part. Join it. And I'm hoping it's flat. It should be flat, I believe. So I can cap it. Okay. Because I want to actually cut that out of the bar. Because technically the bulb is removed from the bar. So there's like a negative space thing going on there. So let's pull in difference again. Okay. And then I'll just call this bulb. Oh, no, it's coming out the bottom too much. Scale it way down. And again, the reason why I'm doing this with the lamp is I'm going to turn this thing into a ball that I put the light inside of, and then I can change the translucency of this in Blender to make it have the optimal light. And mostly really what I'm trying to show in this demo is how to control light. And I don't want to really see it though, right? Like when you look down from either side. Maybe just move it up a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. Okay. That's about right. And then I'll Boolean difference again. Keep this, get rid of this. Yeah, nice. And this one will be called bulb. And let's change the object layer. All right. 
So next thing I want to do um, is I want to actually bring this into my scene, um, house scene. So I'm going to save this one as lamp. There it is. And then I'm going to make sure that this is in feet as well, just so we have the same units. Copy it. And then I can open up. My other file here, let's make sure I'm opening the right one. Okay, so here we are. Let's go to our properties here and make sure that we are using the right units. I believe I changed it properly, but meters is not going to work. Eight. Okay. All right, and then we'll paste the lamp in, and that does look about the right size compared to the rest of the place. And I'm going to move it from the bottom. Like bottom center. Switch to a top view. Whoop. And put my top view into wireframe so I can see. And then I'm actually going to just put it like right on the corner of this table, which might seem ridiculous. Or actually, you know what? corner of the rug even better. So I'm always looking for a spot to make sure that it's going to be approximately where I want it to be. So on the floor is a good place, right? So and then I'm gonna go zoom, enter, S, enter. And you can see it's nicely placed on the floor. And then I'll move it back into space a little bit. We don't want it to overlap. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, And then just to kind of check it again, there's the room, there's the lamp, all looks pretty good. Yeah, my wife added some pillows, which does make things a little bit more difficult because now I've got to model those pillows too. Okay, so we are all set here. Um, the next step is to export that and bring it into Blender. So uh, let's do that. So with everything selected, we're just going to go ahead and oh, make sure we rename it. And I'm not going to batch export it because it's just one thing, basically. So I'm going to export selected. And I will put it back in the same folder. It's all my FBX folders or XBX, FBX files. I'll go ahead and call it lamp and save it. And then I'm going to preview it and see how well I can get away with it, not messing it up by lowering the poly count. Yeah, I think less is more here. Cool. Okay. And then let's bring it into Blender. All right, let's go ahead and bring it in. So um, first thing, always making sure that you've got the right unit set, right? Because I might not here. I'm still in metric. I'm going to go to Imperial here. And that way I'm in feet here, same as my FBX. So I'll go ahead and import FBX. 
and I'll go to house FBX. Ooh, wrong one, sorry. Desktop FBX lamp import. And there it is. And let's go ahead and add materials and then play with the lights. Okay, now we're in Blender. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna switch out of my camera view. Switch to audit, object mode, options, camera, out of camera view, okay. And let's go ahead now and add our lamp. So file, import, FBX. We'll go to our lamp, import. And then with this lamp, I did notice that the um, quality of the shade is a little dismal, especially if those look at it wired here. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit more than that. So I did go ahead and re-exported just the lampshade at a higher um, quality from Rhino. So let me go ahead and import that a little bit better. And that's just trying to find that sweet spot. Okay, so let's now do the materials. So I'm first going to click on our brass section here, remove it, new one, call it brass. Oh. Okay. And pick a color. Brass is like right around, it's like a light kind of more right in their color. And let's go ahead and bump the metallic through the roof. Play with this shininess. And that's looking pretty good. I would say We'll keep it. And then I'm gonna also put this one at brass. And yes, you could join those together with a control J, but then you'd have to redo your UV map. So let's just, uh, we'll leave it like that. We could always bake the whole thing together later on. This part is just a black plastic and I'm just gonna go ahead and look for one of my other black materials that I've already made. And I'll do the black metal just cause it's fancier. And then this part here is actually um, got a fabric to it. And so what I wanna do with that one is I've actually got a picture that I took of the fabric. And let me go ahead and find it. And it's under right here, date today. And let's open it up here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let me blow it way up. So this is just an up close shot of the fabric. We're gonna use that to make the object. Um, so this is not a seamless texture. So that, that view might have some issues, but I did use a flash, which I was hoping with the distance from it, it would kind of blanket the whole thing, but it does curve. So you're going to get a little funkiness. Whether or not anybody will ever notice is another thing though. So let's go ahead and import and open okay so that is what our material looks like and yes it's too big right so we got to go to shading go to shading here and let's pull this out and we go oops And then go mapping, vector mapping, and then place it right there. And then we'll pull this out and we'll go texture coordinate. And we'll use the UV. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit my decimal point to get this really close. Maybe I'll pull this a little bit wider here. And then the part that I'm gonna be playing with is the scale factor here. So we've got the scale. We click on this, and then we wanna change it, of course, to 
here. Let's go five, five, five. And yes, you can see we do have a seam that looks a little bit funny. So maybe we can try to play with this a little bit. What happens if I do one there? No, I want to do five there. Maybe one here. Not quite perfect, but sometimes imperfections are okay. And I think this one, it's okay. Um, if you wanted to, you could also learn how to uh, flatten out the curves in Photoshop a little bit. So if you played with this in Photoshop and you got rid of the edges, maybe by playing with vignetting or whatever, it would look a little bit better. But because this is going to be kind of translucent, it's not even going to look like this. I'm going to do some more things to it and you're going to hardly even notice. I'm going to actually go ahead and leave it like that. Okay. And then if I'm looking at it, yeah, there's. There we go. That kind of looks like I might be able to get away with it a little bit more. So just playing with the different scale and the XYZ there works for this one. Whether or not it'll work for yours, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead now and play with the material a little bit more. So um, I want this to be kind of transparent. So let's go down here and up the transmission. And then I want it to glow a little bit with um, a little emission here. So I'm going to bump up the emission here, but not all the way. And I want it to be kind of warmer, a warm glow from the light bulb inside. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to play with this. So this is going to be kind of our light bulb, right? So I'm going to go up here get rid of this and just make a new one and call it bulb. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the transmission here, go all the way up and roughness down a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit of emission to it. And then I'm going to actually shift A to add a light and do a point light. And that I think went in the hall or something. So let me go find it. Okay, there it is. G. So I just framed it, selected, and then G. Oops. G. Y. Let's go to a top view. Where's, um, I'm in modeling, of course. Or I need to go to modeling. Okay, so modeling. Decimal point on my numpad or view frame selected right there to grab to make the camera kind of lock onto it. And then I'm going to go to a top view, set it at wireframe, and then G and kind of like move it into position. And then I'm going to rotate to my Y position here, G, Z to lift it up to right where I want it to be. Okay. And then I'll rotate around. And let's go ahead and look at it in ray traced. All right. And then we can see this reflection here looks a little bit funny. So um, let's go ahead and select our light and maybe pull the radius just so it's inside of here. Okay. And bump up the wattage a little bit. Okay. And then I'm wondering 
make some more dramatic shadows. If you lower down the max bounces, the, the shadows become more dramatic, by the way. And then I can see I've also, of course, got a light right there, which is fine. I like that light. I like where it is. But for this specific rendering, I don't like it. So I'm going to right click and go to new collection here. Find out where my new collection is here. And I'm going to call it light off. Oof, <laughs> light off. Okay. And then I'm going to go click on this, find it. There you are. And move you all the way down, put you in light off collection, and then I'm going to make it not be in my view. Okay. So now it's very dark. I'm imagining this scene right now, and I want to have this light. There it is. And I'm going to increase the power. How much am I going to do? Maybe make it super bright. And then I've got like a giant hotspot, right? Okay, so this works just like, you know, you would think. So I'm going to do 120 watt light bulb. Okay, that gives me kind of a nice area there. I'm actually going to warm up the light a little bit. That's nice. It gives you that feeling of of uh, of like a little study area. So I think uh, just uh, leaving it the way it is set right here, we are ready to render. It's looking like it's going to be um, about the right contrast and stuff. So, all right, let's go ahead and hit F12. I'll see you when it's done. All right, so this is the uh, final render here. And what we're looking at is, I think, pretty good. Um, I really like this kind of band that comes across. It feels very natural. Um, the light source is good. It took a bit of time to render because there's so many lights going on and we've got like a lot of reflective surfaces. But in general, I think it uh, came out all right. So um, that's kind of a basic lamp and kind of showing how the light can fall off and a little bit more detail on how the light works in a room. So thank you very much.